forget about me. Don't, 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 don't. I've heard so much about you, and I've just seen you do your fabulous Scylla. Your go Actually, you know, for one moment I thought it was Scylla, and the impression of me was terrible. Fancy, I've never worn a beard in my life. I think you're both wonderful. I can't wait to meet you, and I'm sure one day we will. And have a wonderful, wonderful summer, and see you soon. Hello. I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm having a dinner party and I seem to run out of coffee. You can be anything you want to be there. You can see anything you want to see there. There's excitement in the air for you and me there. Fancy free there. Take your family there. But you've got to be there. It's nearly six o'clock. Pack up and piss off. Hi there, guys. Hello. So we've got one of our dirty and flirty quizzes happening at the House of s and All the details are coming up. Well, it's not hosted by us. Let's introduce you to who is hosting it. Hiya, darling. Hiya. It's me, Brandy Cobbler. And it's me, Sherry Stone. We can't wait to get quizzical with you. And physical. So we'll see you at the quiz. Ta-ra. Thank you very A little advert there for those who live in Scarborough. Shameless plugs. Hello, darlings. Welcome back to the Wigan Slingback. It's been a while, hasn't it? It has. It's been weeks. Weeks and weeks. Three weeks. And I've got a spot on my nose. And it's annoying me. Um, so I thought I'd point it out straight away. It's not away. annoying me. Um, we've had to dust, dust down. Cleared, cleared the pipes. Cleared the barrels. So, go well, on. You talk. So um, let's sup up and have a good evening. Have you missed me? No. Have you missed me? Um, yes, I've we been travelling the world, but I'm back, back, back again. Texas, Dubai? Texas and Dubai this time. Off to Kuala Lumpur next month. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, who is in? There's loads of you, so I'm going to be nice and quick. Bloody Stuart Cahoon. <laughs> Stuart Cahoon, th first through the door. Now, I don't know if... Because we, we pre-plan the live now, so this has been... Um, this has been on here for a while, so some of these messages might be early. But Stuart Goon, straight through the door, followed by Tracy 30, and then Kim Peterson. Kim and Jens and Mrs. Rasmussen. Kim and Jens are building a pond They've in built the garden. A pond. 
And it's not just any normal pond. It's got like a skyscraper in it for the fish. It's like a long cylindrical tube full of water. In and the they, middle of the pond. And these little fish come up. <laughs> and it's like they're in a little high rise. <laughs> Can they get down and out of yeah, it? Yeah, they swim down, up, <laughs> down. Um, who else is here? Uh, Angela Larson. Um, I think she's over in California. Yay. Um, Josh Spencer. I heard Josh. Josh came to Scarborough, didn't he? he while did. I was um when I was hobnobbing the world. And I think he's been to Butlins again, or Pontins, or holiday camp. Yeah, holiday okay. camping. Uh, the Duchess is here, the Duchess. I'm glad you're here with us, having a large one. Uh, let's have a look. Stuart Cahoon. Stuart Cahoon's chatting away. Stuart um, Cahoon. Mad Abba fan. Hello, darlings. Um, Coral Daft is here. She's got a bottle of jam shed open. And she says she is officially retired. Yeah! <laughs> Congratulations, Coral. Um, retiree. Uh, Stuart Cahoon again. Uh, chatting away, Stuart Cahoon. Uh, anyone new? Paul McFarlane is here. Capital Paul says he's missed us. David Moore We've is missed you in. Too. Um, Summer 21 is here. Uh, Claire BBQ. Claire B80, Hugh Bonnet, Shandy Warhol, um, Chums Fan1243, um, Sandra Brown is here, Lee Ludlow. Ludlow and Cahoon. The other half of that mischievous pairing. Um, Scylla Black is here. The Scylla Black OBE has risen from her crypt um, to greet us all. Um, and it's nice to have her here. Um... Darren Bramley is here, who we have to thank for our Biggins clip. Alan, Jamie, oh, I've heard so much about you and I just... Darren spent Saturday with Biggins and his husband and um, chatted about us and played lots of our clips to Biggins. And our little Bramley apple also got us a super loud clip, didn't he? Yeah, so Bram, uh, Bramley is collecting our celebs for us. Someone mentioned over there, I'm not, I'm, I'll come to it, but someone said we need Bob Carroll G's. Is Carroll G's still alive? Yes, with us, I think. On you get to it, Darren. Um, Nibbles and Bubbles is here. That's Bubbles on her own, because Nibbles, I know, is at work. BG Bear is in. BG, we are thinking oh, of you. Oh, sending lots of love, BG Bear. Um, BG has had a loss, I think, this week or last week, so lots of love to you, BG. Out and about with David um, from Cardiff in South Wales. Out and about with David. Oh, David, do you know our Welsh boys? They are, I don't know what area of Cardiff they live in. Mac they live and in Alex. Uh, <laughs> Lam, someone called Lam, Lambeth Walk? Lambeth North? The Lambeth Walk. Do in the Lambeth North. Something North? Uh, Lampwick North? <laughs> <laughs> Who else is in this... In this um, very busy room. Pauline Grant is here. David Moore. Uh, David Moore's sharing his top five child movies from childhood. Star Wars, number one. Number two, E.T. Number three, Alien. Ooh. Uh, number four, Jaws. Mm. Number five, Debbie Does Dallas. No, Tay. No, 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 Mikey. No, 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 Mikey. Uh, Gareth from Porto is in. Says, Ola, can you hear me over there? We can hear you loud and clear, Gareth. Um... Linda LeHughes is in, says, Evening, everyone. It's been too long. I hope we're all well. We are indeed, my we love. We are. We've had a lovely heat wave. Oh, yeah. It's hot. It's hot and sweaty up here it's tonight. down outside, though. Uh, Joel Hazeldean is in. Hello, Hi, Joel. Joel. The lovely Joel. Um, Mr. Venus is here. Hi. Hi. Uh, is your lovely husband with you? Dale Ibbotson is in. Uh, Eamon Clabby is here from the Wirral. Uh, all right, Eamon, love. Uh, Nibbles and Bubbles are writing in capitals, especially for Paul. Uh, let me see anyone else uh, that I've missed. Rolling down, rolling, rolling, rolling down the river, rolling down the Carmans. Um, oh, a little drink to Tina. Did we? Did we mourn Tina? No, you're sure away, we weren't we? You away to Tina. Oh, Jonathan Brett Warren is in. Loving the eighties medley. Um, so it's by someone called Danielle Ate the Sandwich. Uh, so you'll find it on YouTube. Danielle Ate the Sandwich on uh, YouTube for that 80s medley. First Age Comics are in, who are selling lots of like £10 little goodies at the moment. So get onto First Age Comics' Facebook page 
if you fancy um, owning one of those um, slimy monsters from Ghostbusters. Uh, who else is in? Um, Alex Johnson is here. I don't know if I'm missing anyone else. Um, Pip is in. Pip says, Shalom. Um, Pip is on holidays in Butte with iffy Wi-Fi, so may drop out. Butte, is that Cornwall? Definitely. Our Wi-Fi is a bit dodgy at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, it went off twice, three times this morning. Uh, Diangela is in. Hello, Diangela. Hello, Diangela. I think that... Oh, no, there's lots more. It's... It's whipping past quick. So if I've missed your comment, I am sorry because they do whip chums, fast so really chums. quickly. I've mentioned chums. Rosie Kinman, RH, uh, is in. Perth, from Perth. From Hello. Perth, Australia. Hello, RH. Um, yeah, I've missed loads of comments, but they are whizzing past. So I apologise if I've missed your comment. And in the little, little snug in Facebook land, uh, our first person was um, Alexandra Bowen. Hello, darling. Um, Sarah Simpson, she says, hello, Alan, Jamie, and I hope Peggy's well. And we hope you're well as well, Sarah. And how's your mum, Elaine? Uh, Mark Mundane Pearson, always been busy. Always oh, talking French. Bye. He's been making decking. He's put a hot tub in. Uh, he's been to a wedding. He's been fishing. Um, oh, and this Ricky's only just got over spinal surgery. Oh, Ricky, Ricky's been enjoying it as well. Uh, followed by the lovely Sandwell, Neil Sandwell and Lady Vane. Oh, we've got to raise a glass to Henri, Little haven't we? Henry's got his... Was it a first, did he get? Yeah, he did. He got a first, first in um, forensic science. He's like um, he's gonna Amelia be on, Fox. He is. He's going to be on um, Silent Witness. And I won't sing the theme tune. Um, lovely Alexandra Bowen um, said, um, it's a year since somebody's passed away. Since partner. her partner died. So I'm sending you lots of love. Of you. Alexandra, lots of love to you. Um, Mount Gun Spence says, hello. Uh, followed by Jamie Wright and Mark Hall, our little Welsh boy. And I think it's Landaff North, I think he said. So I got, I got that I got that wrong. I look right. Keith now. Wellens. Keith Wellens has not been well, have you, darling? Yeah, it's been a while since you've popped in to say hello, but at least you're here. Lovely Nigel and Neil. Which we've seen them soon, haven't we? Yeah, we're seeing Nigel and Neil next week. We're seeing them on Sunday. And we're seeing Big Dave from Carolina. Yeah, he's, he's living up in Ireland, isn't he? Yeah, but he's, he lands in Leeds on Sunday. So everyone, we're, we're having a little Wigan Sling Back live gathering on Sunday. Yeah. Um, so we'll take some photos for you. Lovely Gabrielle Chasse says hello, everybody, from Maine. Um, Joel, Joel popped in, say hello on this side. Uh, hello, David. It's um, David and Anne. That's me. I know. It's like a little person. It's your mum and dad and my <laughs> lovely mum... Father-in-law. No, it's pointing at me on his profile picture. Um, there, oh, there she is, Alexandra Clark. Late in. as always. He's like his bus, isn't he? He is. Works on the buses, and he pops in late. Now him and Mark want to sit in the beer garden, so I got Sherry to clean it out. Well, she's to pissed, swill it. It's pissing down, so she's popped a couple of umbrellas up. So you can pop out there, boys. Um, it was Martin Garton Spence that said we need to get Bob Carroll cheese. We do. Yeah. Uh, Marcia is here. Hello, Marcia. How are you? I'm sure Marcia will only be here for 45 minutes, though, because it's sewing bee Puckering night. time. She said it last week and the week before. She did say puckering. Put a pucker in at the back. And she made, she did something where she, like, deliberately made them put a massive F off bow on it, didn't she? Yep. I'm sure she's watched our skits. Bethan Williams is in. Bethan. Look what's up there. We've got our wig and sling back. We're loving our cushion and Peggy's loving our little bone cushion too. Our wig and sling back bunting up. Uh, who else have we got there? We've got something. Susan Landry. Yes, she says. It's been a while. Lovely Jay Shaw. You, you're not late, doll. You've got plenty plenty of time left with us. And Paul popped in with, it, with not with no capitals this time. There we go. Doing the Klandaf North. Doing the Landaf North. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> Klandaf North. North should be in Welsh. <laughs> Clandath North. Clandath North. Um, oh, we're missing, missing a few there. Let's have a look. Um, Thank you, hi, Gabrielle. Caroline, hello, darling. Caroline, and Elliot's been um, playing some very violent game on on his PlayStation or Xbox or oh, whatever it is. And uh, someone commented tonight and said, oh, Elliot, you're the best medic there is. Oh, <laughs> oh is he helping people after being like being up? I think so. I don't understand computer games nowadays. They're very violent. <laughs> Driving and shooting, all that malarkey. Um, I'd like a really boring one, like, um, let's go shopping. Wouldn't you? Or let's make a cake. So you can do little games where you, like, um, run uh, hospitals, or you run a school, or you run a theme park. <laughs> but I've never played them. 
Uh, uh, Melanie Fairley is here. She says she's sorry. Like, Don't apologise if you're late, my darlings. Caroline Ibbotson is in. Caroline, I'm loving your, your channel, by the way. I must say, I've taught me how to do soda bread. Uh, it's called, I'm trying to remember, Emotional Urban, Urban Homestead. Homestead. And it's on the YouTube. So find Caroline. Um, she lives down the road in Brid, but it's like she lives in a farm. Um, and she's got, she only got a little garden, but she gives you all these little nuggets of information. She grows potatoes, about how to grow grows beans, radishes, all carrots, sorts. how to make soda bread, how to make gooseberry jam. Um, so, yeah. Mr. Darcy is in. Uh, so that's night. Nice. Mr. Darcy is in both rooms. He's gone by. And Caroline says that Elliot wasn't helping people. He, he was, was fighting. Proper fighting. Um, so I'm missing loads of comments, but they're whizzing by and we can't read everything. But let's have a look. Um... Bubble says she thought of you, Alan, when Esme said puckering. People did. <laughs> People did. And wasn't it wasn't it Nigel Neal says they've never watched it and Nigel and Neal never watched Sewing Bee, but they were having a sort of slobbing night last Wednesday night and it was on the telly. And I think it was Nigel said to Neil I might have got the wrong way around. Nigel said to Neil, Why do I recognise this little old grey woman with a bob? And Neil didn't let on and Nigel just watched the whole programme. And then when Esme at the end went, Look, it's all puckered. He went, oh my God, it's Alan. <laughs> oh. um, David Moore says he's popped into the Facebook snug. He's leaving a quick thumbs up and then he's come gone back oh. to YouTube before someone offers him a sweet sherry. And we've just been joined by Stephen Richards who says, good evening, everyone. Hello, Stephen. Um, Darren B says he is working on... We're not allowed to mention it now, are we? This morning. This week. Uh, and... He says he's rehearsing the Globe Girls tomorrow for Transmission Friday. I don't know what the Globe Girls are, Darren. No, is it a musical? Oh, well, he had Shrek in this week. He did, didn't and, uh, he? Oh, Darren's camera work. He was. I don't know if Darren was whizzing about, but someone had a, a camera on a gurney whizzing about on a handheld. Gurning. It was like an episode of ER. Um, Jonathan Brett Warren says it's a good word, puckering. But I love the word puckering. Do you remember we did it's, a, it's what the, it's the word, you know when Beryl Reed said to get a character she put shoes on and some said it would be mine to get Esme, I said Pockering to get the voice, Pockering. You did a whole we did a whole quiz round by Esme, didn't we, once? And all the answers were Pockering, Pickering, <laughs> Piccolo. <laughs> what was it? A dog? Po uh, knees. <laughs> the little fairy from uh Pock. <laughs> Miriam Ember is here and says Happy Eid. Yeah, everyone who's celebrating Eid, Eid Maria back, I think. Happy Eid to anyone who is celebrating. It's this week. Um, the Globe Girls are a drag act, says Darren. Oh, get them to do a little video for us, Darren. You know what we like. You know, you know. He's becoming our little PA, isn't he? <laughs> Darren said we should do it. He, he had an idea for a, a pop video and said he'll borrow a couple of cameras and they'll come up. <laughs> I'm going to do a big um, feature. Stephen, our friend, has got a drone. Um, so I was saying to him, well, Stephen, we want to get on the cliffs and do like um, some um, sort of Cher or Wilson Phillips Wilson videos. Phillips with video. <laughs> There's also a Bonnie Bonnie Tyler on a cliff that yeah, I want to do. Yeah, there's loads, isn't there? Um, Paul McFarlane is in capital letters, says, I love Alan and Jamie. We love, we you, love too, you all Paul. too, my darlings. Um, so what have we been up to? Well, we're preparing for sort of three events, really, at the moment, at the moment yes, aren't we? Yeah, We've got yeah. um, our quiz next week. Which so the is, quiz is on Thursday night. That's our third, isn't it, so far? Yeah. Um, and that's got a different sort of, like, naughty, naughty little theme to it. And then we're on the 16th, of course, we've got our bingo, which is a, a, a live event at the Stephen Joseph Theatre, at four o'clock. Bingo. He used to give me roses. I wish he could again. And just before that, um, in Scarborough, every year they have this sort of big food festival called Sea Fest. Is it a food festival? Yeah. Well, it's a festival of Scarborough. And um, in there's a massive marquee where they do loads of like um, cooking demonstrations. And our good old chum Martin from the um, Eat Me Cafe is doing a cooking demonstration, which he does every year. Yes. And um, at last year, he sort of chuckled and said, oh, it'd be funny if you two could get involved. And so we are. So we're, we're um, gate-crashing his cooking demonstration. We're, um, what's the word? Were you, were you... Gate-crashing. Gate-crashing, yeah. 
we're gate crashing his cooking. He knows we're doing it. Wedding crashers. Um, but we're um, sort of... We're barging in we're and barging pass, in passing characters. judgment. We're going to be a bit whinge and block it, I think. A bit more Les and, Les and Sissy Nader, aren't we? Uh, Melanie says lots of free grub. There will be, but he'll, I won't be able to have it because it'll all be meaty or fishy. So um, well, You won't be able to have it if it's meaty, will you? Well, I'll love a bit, a bit, a bit of fish cheek. Um, so I'm writing a little, little skit for that. Let's have a look if we can see the pecky cat. Oh, there she is. She flaked out. It's hot. Hot, hot, hot. Peggy was very happy tonight. Um, Sarah Simpson, you love this story. Um, I've, I've got a bad back. I pulled my, pulled my back. And then Jamie popped out to the cinema, didn't you? I did. So um, I thought, well, I'll have a lie down before tonight. Um, and so Jamie came back and took Peggy out, gave her dinner. And then went to a bath. Then I thought, I'll have a bath. And then I woke up around about six o'clock. Brought Peggy down. I thought, well, I'll leave Jamie in the bath. I won't disturb him. Gave Peggy her dinner. She had two dinners tonight, <laughs> didn't she? Yeah, and I heard Peggy's little collar chinking on her bowl while I was in the bath, and I shouted down, Peggy's already eaten. So she's had two dinners tonight, so she's loving it. It's like buffet on a Disney cruise. <laughs> uh, Timmy Alexis Carrington. Oh, oh here she just is. Popped in. She says she's just joining us now. She's halfway through drying her beard. <laughs> That's a you euphemism. Know. There's no way to talk about Dex Dexter. Timmy, this Sunday, just passed, did a wonderful interview with Genevieve Le Mans, or Genevieve Lemon from... <laughs> We've always called her Genevieve Le Mans, um, but she's, she's called Genevieve Lemon. But she's Rabbit Warren from Prison Sub Cage, and a whole... Loads of other things. Been in loads of stuff. In. She was in The Piano with Jane Campion. Yeah. I remember... Um, Watching that as a kid and going, oh my god, it's Rabbit from Prisoner. And we've always loved her, haven't we? Yeah, we've actually got a CD of her. We live. have, yeah. So um, Timmy does a wonderful two-hour interview with her about what she's been up to and all the all the parts and characters she plays. Yeah, she's just been in a film with Clooney and uh, Julia Roberts, so he talks about that. As and well. that's um, Travel Radio, isn't it? Travel dot Radio. And I'm, is it on a is it on a thing where you can? Yeah, you can listen again. I listened on Monday. That's when I caught up on it. He's not drying his beard. He's, oh, he's dying. dying his beard. Oh, she'll be all night then. Timmy, we, I've, we thought <laughs> I've thought about dying mine. I've thought about dying mine, but I don't know if I should. Pink? I'm, I'm so, it's so grey though. Blue? No, like dark. I think I'd look younger if it was dark. But You should just do it and see what it looks like. No, because then if it's awful, I'd have to shave it off. And I, I wouldn't well, want to see myself out? without a beard now. Um, there's little, uh, those little um, things with Play-Doh where it just comes through. <laughs> That was in My Little Toys, wasn't it? Yeah. My favourite toys. Uh, so I went to the cinema this afternoon. Now, our only cinema in Scarborough is called the Hollywood Plaza. And um, it's like a proper flea pit, but I love it. Um, it is. It's like going back in time to the 80s. It's like going when you were a kid to the cinema. Um, it's like It's so gorgeously kitsch and retro, but they have no idea that it's kitsch and retro. Um, it's got, there's a weird, like, old, really vintage hand dryers in the, the toilets. They've got little chairs out in the, the foyer to sit down on. You get your ticket and a little click, click. So they've got an usherette, haven't they? They've so got an usherette who pops out with ice creams. Um, the curtain goes, there's a little, like, advert for local businesses and then proper adverts. So, anyway, I went there to watch the new Indiana Jones film. Uh... And Shari says it's distinguished, the Hollywood Plaza. Do you go to it, Shari? I hope you do. I love it. It's eight quid a ticket. I think she might be in your beard. Oh, my beard. <laughs> Not the Hollywood Plaza. She might mean that. She might mean that. It's um, eight quid a ticket. It's like a family-run cinema. So I love supporting it and going there. I went to see... Um, you went to see all, all I went to see all of the Star Wars films in some big, like, nine-hour marathon once. Oh, yeah. It went on till, like, three in the morning. You loved it, didn't you? Um, but yeah, I went to see uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Uh, and it's good. It's worth seeing. I loved it. It's, uh, you know, it was nostalgic. It's like being a kid. But what I was talking to the fella on the door before I go in, and uh, he was saying, well, most of the people in watching it today are OAPs. And he said, but of course that makes sense because the Raiders of the Lost Ark films came out in the 80s. And he said, that's like 40 years ago. So on. they would have been... 2030 mm. when it came out so they're now 60 70 yeah um but yeah it's good it's worth seeing richie howarth's going to see it tomorrow um is it better than that awful crystal skull 
Oh, oh Scylla didn't Scylla. like the Crystal Skull. Um, it's much better. Uh, it is. It's much better. Oh, no, I'm not going to say anything about oh, it. Oh, no, don't say it. anything. Don't know. Uh, I don't like Fleabag, really, but she's actually quite good in it. Um, it is good. It's just, it's like Indiana Jones' greatest hits. Um, so it's got lots of, like, references to, not references, but lots of little callbacks, I guess, to the other one, without it feeling, like, cheesy. Mm. Um, yeah, I loved it. Uh, Emotional Urban Homestead, uh, Caroline says, it's fab at the plaza. Mm. Shari does think my um, beard is distinguished, not the Hollywood Plaza, but she does frequent the plaza. Um, can, can I just say something? Yeah. Um, if any of you are in YouTube land... Imagine if I said no. No. Well, no, I'd can't. say anyway. Um, if any of you are in YouTube land and struggling to comment, it's because you now need to be a subscriber to our channel to comment. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So if you're not subscribed to our channel, that must be why you can't comment. So, if you can't comment, subscribe to our channel. And then, I think it's about 10 or 20 minutes later, you'll be able to comment. It's just so we don't have all these idiots coming in and ruining and the... Trying to ask us, like, to, to, to ooh, bum, zoo, or... Or have your teeth done, or... <sighs> yeah. yeah. Um, or see hot girls on XXX. Uh, Caroline <laughs> says, I loved Harrison in Crystal Skull, but nothing else. Oh, do you know what? I didn't mind Crystal Skull at all. I quite liked it. Um... It's like being a kid. That's what I liked about it's it. Is Crystal Skull a drag queen? Crystal Skull does sound like a drag queen. Crystal Skull and uh, Destiny Dial are going to be um, performing with Darren Bramley tomorrow. And um, Doom Temple. <laughs> I can't think of one for Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh. Anyway, who bumps Anywho. Who? Right. Any road up. Advert time. It's about half past. Let's have an ad break and we will be back talking about our favourite childhood movies. Um, I hope you enjoy these adverts. I do love finding them for you. I love I I can sit for hours watching all the adverts. Bye! Want to win one of ten wonderful Cherbourg Mediterranean holidays? Then now's the time to buy that soda stream you've always promised yourself. Here's what to do. Count the flavours mentioned in this commercial. Orange and lemonade, apple too. Over here for ginger beer and iron brew. Bowl the cold, a pile of tires up. Bring on the tea. Get busy with the business. So sweet. Lemon lime, strawberry, blackcurrant flavours too. It's a tonic, so symphonic, think of bubble or two. Handy shandy, try a bit to ginger ale or free. Don't deny it on a diet. Try one calorie. A kaleidoscope free. Get busy with the business. How many? Now think of a name for a new fizzy mint flavour. Post it with your SodaStream guarantee card and for the ten correct answers with the mintiest names, there's free tickets to a two-week Cherbourg holiday. 250 runners-up get every flavour mentioned. Get busy with the SodaStream! Hello. I've been investigating the many benefits of big store shopping at Northeast Co-op Price Fighter and Superstores. Like the terrific range of groceries, provisions and frozen foods, the pick of the crop in fresh fruit and vegetables, choicest meats and poultry, famous names in wines, spirits and beers, and really unbelievable prices too. As a housewife, I pride myself on making sure I get maximum value for money. I want more in my basket and more back in my purse, so I go Northeast Co-op shopping. Starting out in life, make it clean and bright, cause you'd like your place to be all fresh and light. So it has to be electricity. Electric slotting cookers, such clean design and clean cooking. Double ovens with stay clean linings, easy clean hobs with energy saving rings. Make a clean start, the electric way. Take control. Um, I'd like to tell you about this terrific new coffee. No, I, I like Maxwell House. But it is Maxwell House. Only it's new. They've made it even better. Well, they'd have to go a long way to improve the flavour it's already got. But they have. Now Maxwell House have discovered the flavour lock. A way to lock in the fresh, natural coffee flavour that makes new Maxwell House now taste even better than before. You know, this new Maxwell House tastes even better than it did before. Do you really think so? Hmm. Do you know, I wouldn't say no to another cup. See? Told you. New Maxwell House. Flavor lock. Naturally. 
Would you like to try a steaming hot passion cocktail? Absolutely fantastic. Oh, thanks to Edna in Sutton Coalfield for the passion fruit he sent me. It's really Rusty's nice. really here to talk about the new Sunbeam Hot Shot, which can heat one cup of water in under a minute. Just had a drop of rum. Hmm? So you can make anything from an instant snack to a cup of coffee. The Sunbeam Hot Shot makes up hot drinks faster than you can down them. A sunbeam always shines. <laughs> Hello. I'm Anita Dobson, and I'm delighted to be the honorary president of the UK Gold VIP Club. The VIP Club is specially for UK Gold viewers and will keep you up to date with all the news and programs on UK Gold, plus offers on videos and books. If you would like to join, then write to this address, UK Gold VIP Club, Free Post, PO Box 168, Derby, or see Gold Text, page 263, for details. Oh, Soda Stream. What would you? What was your? Um, do, do you have a, a wacky title for a mint? <laughs> Soda Stream. Um, mental, fizzy mental, mental sigs. <laughs> Minty moments. <laughs> before at before before eight mint. Now a few people recognise that woman who was popping around the co-op. Somebody Secker. Um, let's have a little look here. Kathy Secker. <laughs> Kathy Secker. <laughs> I said to Jamie, I think that trolley's far too low for her. Kathy Sacker, Time Tea's uh, announcer. And I think Neil said um, he's not seen that shade of blonde for years. Pure Gloria Honeyford. And did you spot Rusty? How good old Rusty. Rusty? Poor Rusty. She was sort of like spoken over, wasn't she? Yeah, but she get paid well. Now, why was Rusty using boiling hot water to make a cocky tea? I've got no idea. <laughs> She'd make a cocktail, but then she just had a cup of tea on the side. And don't join the UK Gold VIP club. No, it's now kapot. <laughs> so if you want an Eldorado VHS, just try your um, charity shop. Local charity shop. Um, All right, to Cathy second. Oh, Angela says, nice new glasses, Jamie. Thank you very much, Angela. Um, they're, not, they're not new, but they're new to here. I've got loads of glasses. Can I show you my glasses? Let me see if you'll see them. <laughs> There we you go. see them up there with two actually plastic glasses in front of them. Yeah, I'm like um, I'm like Biggins or Pollard. Oh, I there we go. Is that oh, back to normal? Hang on. Ooh, well, I'm, a, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit pushed off. No, you're not. That's right, isn't it? <laughs> um, I think Timmy has sent a little video. Can you spot me in this '80s advert, girls? We're not going to play that right now, Timmy. But I'll pop it. Send it me in a little link and we'll pop it in next week's... Um... Is it a Matterson sausage ad advert? I think so. Ma -ma -ma well, uh, we'll play it next week. He's the perfect person to sell, sell a sausage. <laughs> he is. You're telling me. Uh, anyone remember... Smock Bob says, Anyone remember the Brook Bond tea advert? I could do with a D. Pure filth. <laughs> yeah, I've never even thought of it like that. Do with a D. The DP. The dick. Um, yeah, Not DP. <laughs> Um, wasn't it? Um, wasn't it Sue Pollard? We've we've played it here. I think we played it. Uh, we played Sue Pollard doing a tea bon, advert. Brook Bond D. Is it part Brook Bond? Someone out there will know. Which what tea did Sue Pollard advertise? Was it Ooh Typhoon? <laughs> right. Well, it's time for. Five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Top five countdown. Um, so this was inspired by my trip to the cinema, really. Because me going to see Indiana Jones was kind of like reliving my childhood and nostalgia and all of that. So we thought, what are your favourite childhood movies? Those films that you want to see over and over again. You must be saw about 300 times each one. Um, uh, and you still still do want to see we'll them. We'll start with you guys. So Sharon Bolt, I don't know if she's in, but Sharon Bolt's is Jaws. Now I'd say Jaws is like an adult film. No, Jaws. No, I remember. I remember talking about Jaws. It was like it was one of those films where you watched it, and your mum and dad were like, "Oh, it'd be all right. It's only about a bloody shark." But how, oh, how scary was it? My mum went to see it at the cinema with her mate Ros Kerno, and uh, my mum jumped out of her seat and grabbed the man next to her. Not my dad. She just grabbed a strange man. And they've been friends ever since. 
<laughs> It'll be in the days where you could sig in the cinema as well. Not my mum wouldn't be sigging. Ross Curdo might have been having a sig though. Oh, she would. She, she would. sounds like she sigged, didn't she? Oh, Kathy Secker. Ross Curdo. Who's Ross Curdo? My mum's mate. Oh yeah, sorry. Not Kathy Secker. I don't mean Kathy Secker. Uh, Melanie Fairley says her favourite was Empire Strikes Back. She remembers renting it every week mm. from the local news agents. Um, Helen Beat, Sound of Music. She says probably to no one's surprise, and it still is her favourite. Sharon Greenall, mine was Superman the movie. It had everything. Adventure, romance, comedy, a thundering John Williams soundtrack, and of course, Christopher Reeve. Jay Shaw says uh, Love Bug and Herbie. And Bethan Williams says Gremlins. Liz Dawson says Sound of Music. <coughs> Martin Hyde says E.T. And Grease. Sounds rude. Uh, Tony Worrell says early, Winnie the Pooh, Bambi, bit later, the two Thunderbirds films and the Doctor Who films. But then also Mary Poppins and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Sorry, boys, can't decide. Uh, Kerry Davidson, 1971, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, yeah. Now, if I thought of Willy Wonka, it might have been on my list. Uh, Leslie Ford, batteries not included. Oh. It's funny, trying because we can kind of guess your ages from these mm. films. Uh, Sarah Simpson, favourite movies when she was a child, Mary Poppins and Jungle Book. Then we'd be thinking, oh, Sarah Simpson must be in her 60s. And then Lion The King. Lion King. So we we get you. Uh, we know your age. Uh, Helen Whittle, Back to the Future. Helen Whittle, obviously the same sort of age as us. Uh, Andrew Store, Back to the Future as well. Andrew, same age the as Sandwells us. The Sandwells is Slipper and the Rose. Oh, Sandwells, that's a long one. It's a long one, but I quite like it. I quite like Slipping the Rose. Like it. it goes on and on. It's got Nick Crosby in it. There's that awful bit when they go and dance on some graves. Yeah, Oof. the legs in the air. Yeah, so rude. Uh, Sean Millard, Goonies, Mary Poppins, Andrew Chapman, Mary Poppins. A lot of votes for Mary Poppins. A lot of Wizard of Oz. Karen Avery, Wizard of Oz. Uh, Beth and Williams says Wizard of Oz. Sarah Riley, Sound of Music, Mary Poppins, Willy Wonka, Taste the Blood of Dracula. Okay. Uh, Digby, biggest dog in the world. Good. Empire of the Ants, don't knock it. Joan yep. Collins puts in a stellar performance. Yep. And Gremlins and Goonies. Smock Bob's Return to Oz. Oh, Return to Oz. With um, the one who wrote... Sisters, dressmakers... Bob. Oh, Alf Elliot. Yes. The woman who wrote that, she plays oh. the witch. <coughs> Jean Marsh. Timmy says his um, growing up film was Showgirls. He's so young, isn't he? Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark says Marita Blake. Vanessa Gishford says The Goonies Never Ending Story. Mark Mondaman, who's in tonight, says The Rescuers Down Under. Oh, oh my boy. But a boy. Darren Bramley. First film I remember seeing at the cinema was Star Wars. Uh, I don't remember seeing that. Uh, Darren is a big Carry On fan. Right, used to run the Carry On fan club, I think. Um, but other favourites would be Rocky Horror and Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah, Little Shop of Horrors is. Uh, Anne Hill, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, bobbling on, bobbing on on the bottom of the beautiful briny sea. Uh, Elaine Simpson, favourite chart movies when she was a child: Mary Poppins, Bambi, Snow White. Uh, Smart Bob's, who's chatting in there, says, I'm not sure if it counts as a movie, but my nan used to have to rent a feature-length Roland Rat video over and over for him. Wow. One of those little special BBC tapes. With Errol the Gerbil. really expensive. Uh, no, uh, Errol the Hamster and Kevin the Gerbil. Uh, Timmy's popped another one in for us, Animal Farm. <laughs> uh, Heather Crow, Swallows and Amazons, giggled every time they say titty, still does. Um, Erica Ann Deacon says her childhood fave was Tootsie. Mm. It's an odd childhood fate. I think she's just showing off because it's about acting. Showing off, we're up the cameras. Uh, Mark Gunn Spencer's Mary Poppins, Willy Wonka, It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, and Flight of the Navigator. Jed Beji Bear, Star Wars. First film went to the cinema age 10 with my mates, no adults. As a big kid, I have an R2D2 telephone and other sci fi collectibles. Coral says, first film with my late aunt who took me to see Sound of Music at the Majestic Cinema in Leeds in the 60s and says, who else remembers Saturday morning pictures? We come along Saturday morning, greeting everybody with a smile. We come along on Saturday morning, knowing that a lot of worthwhile. As members of the ABC, we do, 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 do. Um... We don't remember Joel, it. Now, this shows Joel's age. Joel, lovely Joel Hazeldean, who we adore. 
says, trying to keep it short. He's, he's changed them now. You read them. And Volcano, 97. Volcano. Power Rangers, 95. He's yep. written that. Kindergarten Cop, 90. No. Cop. Problem Child Problem 2. Problem Child, yep. Problem Child 2, no, 91. <laughs> Look Who's Talking. Just the first one, 1989. Cool Runnings, 1993. Yep. Oh. Bingo, 1991. No, he said Forrest Gump. Um, and Jason Rigby, who's not here tonight, the lovely Jason Rigby says, Seven Network in YouTube, um, love the animation of The Lion, Witch and the Wardrobe. Yeah, I quite like that, but it goes a bit Jesus-y. Does it? Yeah, well, the whole line, The Witch and the Wardrobe, is a bit Jesus-y. Mm. Um... Oh, Bethan. Everybody loves that man, Bugsy Malone. Well, everybody loves Bugsy, isn't it? Do talk... you love Bugsy Malone? I don't mind it. I guess it'll be annoying after a bit, but... My name is Tallulah. But I quite like it, because it's like, you know, every school put it on, didn't they? My name's Brown. Sounds like a loaf of bread. Blousey Brown sounds like a stale loaf of bread. Know it too much. What did you play in, in Bugsy Malone? Did you, never, did you do it at school? Uh, my school didn't do it. Everybody else's did. I think our school's worried about the sort of splat pit. I played Laughing Boy. Had a splurge gun. Uh, and I played various extras. I've told you about that, haven't I, when I was a boxer? Yeah. So you want to be a boxer in the golden ring. And um, I, everyone was like like training, boxing, and punch bags, and uh, shadow boxing. And I had to skip. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I skipped like a proper girl, you know, like do, 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 do. I didn't do like I did like girl skipping. Da, 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 da. And, he had, and he had muscles. They were like knots in cotton, weren't they? <laughs> right, we've missed all of uh, the Mark Monday Pearson says, uh, "Mrs. Doubtfire." Right, we've got to get to hours, and then I'll have a look in YouTube. But let's start with hours. So. Uh, what button am I going to press? Where's my buttons? Where's your buttons on your deck? Dink. Number five for Jamie Honeybourne. The Muppet Movie. The Muppet Movie. So is this the first one? The first Muppet Movie. I love the Muppets it, anyway. Do they go on tour or something? Do they travel? No, they like, it's like how the Muppets are created. Oh, is it? So they don't know each other at the start. Oh, okay. No one knows each other. Oh. And then Kermit sets out on a little journey picks to Hollywood up. and picks them all up. Oh. In various places. Um, it's a, oh, I love it. I'm sure it's I've amazing. seen him, but I can't remember it. Kermit rides a little bicycle at one point. I've seen him in the park. Which is amazing, because he's a Muppet, and he rides a bike. And then if you see what the puppeteers were like above on things, pulling it. Is he not just touched, is he touched the, the pedals? Yeah, but the puppeteers are up there, so he can do his little talking and oh, stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's got, a, the music in it is lovely. It has the Rainbow Connection at the end, which is one of my favourite songs. Um, most probably one of my favourite songs ever. But I just love that whole sequence at the end of the Muppet movie. They're sort of timeless, aren't they, the Muppets? Yeah, I love them. Um, so, Muppet movie. There's the Great Muppet Caper, which has got Diana Rigg in it. Um, there's one which is set in New York. Oh, I can't remember. The Muppets Take Manhattan. Oh, yeah. And that's got Liza in it, where Liza gets uh, Liza's portrait is stolen out of Sardi's restaurant. But Muppet Movie, I love it because I love, like, it's like, um, what do they call them? Origin stories. It's like an origin mm. story for the Muppets. And everybody loves the um, Christmas Muppet movie, don't they? Muppet Christmas Carol yeah. with uh, Michael Caine. Yeah. So, yeah, Muppet, Muppet Movie for me comes in at number five. Alan, number five. Now, this is a bizarre film. I've, I've not seen it in years, but we used to watch it over and over again. It's Howard the Duck. And it was just a bonkers film. We loved it because it was this little duck that came from outer space. Who um, he, he was dating women in it. He was playing guitars. He was in a rock band. <laughs> and then all, obviously his baddies were after him to try and sort of, you know, uh, capture him and do tests on him. <laughs> Um, it was just a bonkers film. We just, just sit there laughing at it. We watched it about 20, 20 million times, I think. Did you own it on video? No, was it one of those on, ones you... No, we taped off the TV. Oh, OK. Um, or when Do you know had... he's part of the Marvel Universe? You oh, know, is he? You know, it's called, it's called, the, Mar it's called the Marvel Universe, no, isn't it? Really? Like he's, like he's canon mm. uh, in the Marvel Universe. So there's a film called Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. And he's in that. Oh, I didn't but know But he's that. like... He's trapped. Maybe he's like he's in a he's in a prison or something. Maybe I can't remember. But it's like he's in it anyway. Um, but they never made. I just remember Elizabeth Shoe 
uh, thing, thing, I should say thing. I don't right? know if it is Elizabeth Shue. Is it not thing Elizabeth Shue? I think it might be Leia Thompson. Oh, well, anyway, somebody's like fingering his little feathers. Yeah, she shags him, doesn't she? Yeah. Uh, Howard the Duck. I think I saw Howard the Duck at the cinema, you know. Would have been when I was about 10, most probably, Howard the Duck. So, so yes, Howard the I Duck. Uh, Jamie, let's go to my number four. Um, number four for me is... Uh, oh, no, you like a dolly! No, you like a little dolly! <laughs> now, it was a toss-up between Labyrinth and Dark Crystal, because I do adore the Dark Crystal. Um, I just adore it. I adore theatricality. Again, this is another Jim Henson, eh? Mm. Um, I love Labyrinth. Uh, I went to see it at the cinema. I went to see it with Andy Wilde mm. at the cinema in Crosby. Yeah. Um, not the normal Southport cinema that I'd go to. Um, and I remember going to see it and I knew nothing about it when I went to see it. Not got a clue what mm. I was going to go and see. Um, and I was blown away by it. Oh, I we loved it as a family it. film as well, Labyrinth. Yeah? Oh, yeah. We watched it loads of times. Um, I just love it. It's so magical. And yeah. um, all the little creatures and... And then I've collected like books, haven't I, on yeah. on the artists that created all the goblins of the labyrinth. Oh, and the music's amazing. And isn't it? fairies. The music's, good, isn't it? the music's great. Bowie's in it, which is of course oh, amazing. Yeah. I remember I didn't really know David Bowie when I saw this. I kind of knew of him. I think from Absolute Beginners. I loved him. I used to pretend to be Sarah mm. from <laughs> Labyrinth. Why not? She was. Uh, yeah. And run about the woods in yeah. Formby. They were the labyrinth. Yeah. Um, Loved it, love it. You remind me of the babe. What babe? The babe with the power. What power? The power of voodoo. You do. Who do? Do what? Remind me of the babe. Um, any little uh, comments that I'm missing? Dale loves the Muppets. Um, Kermit singing Rainbow Connection. Um, Jonathan Brett Warren, I don't know if it's random, but mentions that he played a tap dancing Egyptian in Pharaoh's Court when he did Joseph at school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, Darren B says a lovely chum called Simon Buckley was a puppeteer on the Muppet movies um, uh, Darren Small mentions Albert Finney and Scrooge the musical um, lots of love for Labyrinth yeah. uh, Melanie Fairley Dark Crystal scared the hell out of me when I watched it as a kid oh, I love Dark Crystal yeah it's quite scary isn't it yeah the Skeksis yeah Ooh, Skeksis um, tell you what I loved about the Dark Crystal is the ending Spoiler alert. So if you've never seen it, close your ears. The ending of The Dark Crystal, when the two kind of creatures come back and form one creature, and it's like, like when the shard was broken, they they split into two little creatures, like the good ones and the bad ones. Mm. I loved it. Made me think. Anyway, Labyrinth. Love it. Um, and yeah, you often do the little old lady from... No, you're like a little you? darling. No, you don't. You wish collect on the toys. Yeah, and she pops them all on her back. You don't need to go anywhere. You're here, Sarah. I wonder, was that Andrew Lansbury? No, it wasn't, but it's quite like my impression of Aunt Lydia, isn't it? Oh, yeah, from Handmaid's Tale. We're watching Handmaid's Tale at the moment. Um, so we've, 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 like the last series, we've, so don't spoil it. Um, but Aunt Lydia, um, who, if anyone's watched it, you know that Alan would do a great Aunt Lydia. But I, <laughs> I try and do an Aunt Lydia impression. Um, should I do it now? Yeah. Oh, girls, you need to behave for the commander. Do you like a dolly, <laughs> girls? You don't need the little dolly. Well, why do I do it wrong? What do you do? Girls. Come on, girls. Is it time to be good? Blessed be the fruit. Blessed be the fruit. Blessed be the goddamn fruit. Oh. Alan's number four is... Uncle Buck. Loved this film. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, a very big fan of John Candy. Left us too early. Um, but I'd love to be an Uncle Buck. It's the sort of uncle that you'd want to spend time with. Unless you're the, you know, the teenager girl. I'd never seen Uncle Buck until... Um, I showed you it. Yeah, until we started dating and then you showed me it. My favourite scene is that when he um, meets the, the teacher who's who slags off little... Um, what's his face? McCulky Culkin. McCulky Culkin. And I'm sure it's like walked on a lip. And he just slings a, a dollar coin and says, you yeah, buy a cheap rat to chew that goddamn monstrosity of your face. Um, I like his girlfriend in it, don't I? Oh, yeah, the ginger woman. Yeah, the ginger girl. I think I like her in it. The dad, the mum and dad look so 80s, don't they? They are, yeah. They're really worried, aren't they? Aren't they seeing a, 
a, a parent who's I can't dying. Remember. And um, all the houses going in, you know, chaos. Oh, John Candy's ace. Do you remember I first saw John Candy in um, Stripes? I loved Stripes as a kid because it was like a naughty film as well. I think we must have owned it on video. Mm. And he mud wrestled. Do you remember oh, yeah. It? Alex Clark says the toothbrush scene and they're all like brushing their teeth. Um, but also um, at the end when they, um, you know, they hated him and thought he was a right weirdo. But at the end they love him. Oh, does even the girl love him at the yeah. end? Oh. Spoiler alert. He saves her from being... Spoiler alert. Oh, for, is it a bit rapey? Mm. All those 80s films are a little bit, like, naughty. The boys are all often a bit predatory in them, aren't they? Yeah. Number three, Jamie. Had to well, it had to be in there somewhere. Star, a Star Wars film had to be in there somewhere. Now, I know a lot of you won't most probably like this one, but you've got to remember my age. So... I'm born 1974, so I would have been about nine, I think, when this came out. Um, so perfect age for it. It was full of monsters, so like Jabba's Palace, all of that. And then it had Ewoks in it, so cute little teddy bears. Um, and if you remember when we talked about toys, Star Wars toys and teddy bears were like in my top five. So I just loved it. I loved it. I loved um, that opening sequence in Jabba's Palace. Then I loved the Ewoks bit. The middle bit's a bit boring. Um, but yeah, I love it. I love the Ewoks. Melanie Fairley says she hates the Ewoks. I love the Ewoks. I think the Ewok, it was originally meant to be a planet of Wookiees. So Wookiees is what Chewbacca is. Mm. But they, I guess they changed it. I don't know. So yeah, Return of the Jedi. Um, Luke and Leia find out they're brother and sister. So we ignore the fact they've snogged. Spoiler alert. Snogged, <laughs> snogged, snogged a bit earlier. Um, I think I haven't seen it twice with you. Have you really? Yeah, I can't remember any of it. I remember the little, the little things in the, in the jungle. Did you look at the Death Star? I remember being so excited when that poster came out. Because you didn't see like trailers and stuff, did you then? It's Going, half oh, broke. The, de- the Death Star's back. They're the rebuilding. Oh, no, it's it? being built. Oh, right. Um, <coughs> lots of people love Empire Strike Back. Scylla Black says um, she's seen some of the cut material from un- Uncle Buck. Oh, that's she? Scylla. Um, let's have a look at Alan's number three. All I need is a name. Turn around. All I need is a name. Look into our This was what, a family favourite. Um, that was, you know, we owned the video. I think we um, we went without food for a week to pay for it. It was so expensive, weren't they, back then? Couldn't you just buy them from like the the bin at the video shop? Yeah, this was never in the bin. I think they got. I think it got watched that many times. It got just chewed up. We we paid for those. Paid for a, like top dollar. Yeah. Was it in like a big cassette box? It would have just been. like. And a, I think it was in. Not cell- like Anita Dobson's El Dorado video. No, it was in cellophane. I think it was something like thirty pound. It was you know when they were really expensive. Why did you Why did you buy it? Because we loved it. We just loved it. We loved the music. We loved the characters. Um, I think I think we taped off the telly, and um, we just thought when it came out, we thought we'll just buy it, and we did play that tape to. To death. Do you know what? As a as a kid, I found it quite boring. Oh no, it was lovely. As an adult, I've watched it and sort of enjoyed it. And anybody who um, remembers the horse scene, will will blob. Will you know blob. these ones here. So this one. Yeah, they're hardly in it. This one that's on a snail and yeah. the big rock monster. They're only in the like first five minutes, aren't they? No, they they sort of keep cropping up. They go on the journey. Do they? The, yeah. I thought they just got eaten up by the There's invisible. Little, well, they do eventually. Well, it's coming, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but the little old man's hardly in it. I think Patricia, Patricia Hayes is in it. I think she's his wife. Is Patricia Hayes in Willow? Oh, is she? Yeah. I think she might be in this. She's in this, though, I think. I think. What's the one where three women are fighting over one eye? Give me the eye! <laughs> what's that's, that? That's, um... Oh, what's his name? The little owl. Brown, bronze Owl. Oh, Clash I, of the Titans. Clash of the Titans. Oh, that could be in my top five Maggie as Smith. well. Love it. Oh, yeah, Maggie Smith. Uh, Melanie Valley remembers seeing Crocodile Dundee VHS for sale for fifty nine ninety nine. They charged the <laughs> bloody earth back then, honestly. Like, but then there was no, you know, how, how, how else would you see it on your, on your own without renting it over and over again? Do you know what I also get annoyed about? The princess is bloody wet, isn't she? Oh, she needs a bloody name. This one. This one. Oh, she needs a name. Does she get a name? Yeah. What is it? 
I think it's his dead, dead mother's name. But we never know what um, it is. He whispers it to her. Oh. And it saves the black. Oh, no, we used to love the luck dragon because our little dog Patch looked like Peggy him. looks like the luck dragon. Is she down there? Well, with a black, with a, with a black face. Um, I think Lucy was just saying one of her dogs looks like the luck dragon as well. His ears flacking. Look, look what Paul wrote. <laughs> Paul says he wants the isolation creations to be a never ending story. Oh, Paul, you sweetheart. I don't know. Will there will be an end at some point, wouldn't there? Oh, cheers. Oh, uh, yeah. Will <laughs> there end? Blackness. All I need is a name. Please save the isolation creations. I just need a name. Just write it. Oh. <laughs> right. My. What am I? Number two now. Number two. Yeah. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. The Temple of Doom. Again, I think this is like a um, like a weird choice because I don't think people would say this was their favourite at all. But I was the perfect age for it. I went to see it with my big brother Ewan, who might be watching. I don't mm. know if he is, but he might be watching. He was at high school, so he picked me up from primary school. And we got the train into Southport to see it together. At, like the first ever showing of it, I think. Mm. Like so the four o'clock showing or something um, at the Southport cinema. The, the, oh, I can't remember the name of the cinema. Um, Caroline worked there. What, the same day? No, no. Caroline would have been about eight when I went to see this. <laughs> cinema <of> age. <laughs> um, I loved it. Short round. Um, I love short round in it. I love... I just love it. I love Indiana Jones. I love like adventure films anyway. Is that the monkey, the monkey brain bit? Yeah. Oh. Uh, obviously, it starts off with Anything Goes, sung in Chinese. So the little, she is funny. The little gay Jamie's loving that. She's amazing. I love she that is camp. scene. Oh, she's camp as anything. She gets a little, she gets a diamond at one point. She wants to get a diamond. Mm. And then she picks up an antidote for a poison. I can't mm. remember. And she goes, this no head, she's a real small guy. Um, Timmy Alexis says, mine are all a bit blokey. <laughs> Do you think mine are a bit blokey? Timmy, you're right there. He loves things like um, airplane what disaster did I, movies. What did I shock you telling you that I would watch? Oh, here we, when we first met, he said, I No, love what did I shock you? This week, oh. it was on a, a series of films. And I said, oh, I might quite like watching them. Oh, Fast and Furious. <laughs> Fast and Furious 17. <laughs> I've never seen them, and I said, oh, I might quite fancy watching the Fast and the Furious films. You know, things like air- airport disasters and airplane disasters. Well, not now, you travel a lot. But um, you, used to, you must for a box set once here of disaster movies, oh, didn't you? Yeah, the airpo- airplane ones. Airplane 77, Concord. Love them. Yeah, he likes, he likes a blokey film. Mind you, I do, don't I? You like scary I like revenge. films. I like revenge. Oh, Alan likes revenge Death films. Wish. I bet if I was, um, uh, what's his name, um, Caroline's son's uh, Elliot's age, I'd be into all the fighting games. <laughs> what would I be playing? Pet Patrol. <laughs> um, right, so that is my number two film, Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom. Love it. Um, Harrison Ford, sexy in it. Um, little short round, loving it. And Willie Scott is campus tits. So, I love that film. Um, and it's a film that I used to watch all the time on video. We had it on video, and I used to ask my mum to watch it. That when I came home drunk, do you remember? Well, for years there was the sort of the trilogy, wasn't there? That we had. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. they started making other ones. Junior. Yeah, I didn't really like that one. I watched that one on the plane on the way back from Texas. Uh, Alan's number two film is. We didn't mean to do it. Can we come back? <laughs> they don't say that when they're in the What do you mean to do it? Zone. Sorry, Superman. Um, I loved Sarah Douglas in this. I loved her. I was gutted that she got killed off by um, Lois Lane. But you love that moment, don't you? Because Lois Lane sort of yeah has punches her. Well, they, they lose <laughs> their power, don't they? Um, but I love I love Superman too. We we me and my brother watched that oh more than a hundred times. I was just checking Brandy's hair. It's right by that. That light, it won't melt, it's, will it? It's LED, darling, it's not hot. No, the, the lava lamp. Oh, that will be hot. <laughs> Let me uh, go and check Brandy's hair. Uh, yeah, I loved it. Um, I love the second Superman movie. Um, everybody loves a baddie. But look at her, she's amazing. She collects little badges, doesn't she, from 
Man in the Moon. Man what, on the Moon. What does she say when she goes in a, a, a rough, no, in a, in a roughneck diner? Just let's hold hands. <laughs> like, smashes her. Because someone wants to arm wrestle with her. Yeah. And um, Terrence Stamp's amazing in it, because um, Grog or Trog, whatever his name is, just goes... A little squeaky one at the end. And um, you can forever see uh, Terrence Stamp roll his eyes, like, oh... Is this the one where, um, like, there's a darker cut of it? There's an actual version of this film where it's sort of it's dark and a bit moody and then it was remade for the one we watched. Oh, I've no, I have no idea about they that. They put in like comedy stuff like um Clark going to Clark and Lois going to Niagara Falls and Oh, okay. The summit about oh there is a darker version of it. Yeah. It's the Richard Donner cut. I think. Oh I did I like to see that. Yeah. Um but yeah we loved it, we loved it and you know Superman loses his powers and so these three take Take over and yeah, but look, amazing. Melanie says that uh, she's brilliant in V yep, as well. She, is. she plays like Diana's boss, doesn't she? Yeah. <laughs> she, she, she does that. <laughs> Diana's the one who eats like a, a guinea pig at one point, but she's her boss, I think, and comes in and is more badass. And it's a bit the V that I think she's in V the series, which goes a bit dynasty ish. Mm. Because the first Superman's good, yeah, <laughs> second one's really good, third one's just a bit daft, isn't it? Do you know what? I quite like the third one. I like um, Annie, I, Annie, is it Annie... Pamela Stevenson? No, the old woman. Annie Ross. Annie Ross is in it. Gets sucked into the machine. <laughs> yeah, but this is this was my favourite. I think Christopher Nibbles is scared of that third one when she gets sucked into the machine oh, and becomes he? a robot. He's a little, little bit younger than us, isn't he? He is, yeah. Um, I loved uh, Superman 3 because it's, it's funny with Richard Pryor in it and Pamela Stevenson yeah. plays the sort of bimbo. Just, I've even got little sound bites in my, in my brain. There's a bit where um, people are stuck on the Eiffel Tower. In this one. Yeah. And there's like a, a man doing a really bad French accent. <laughs> and he goes, uh, stop being stupid, you're going to get off. <laughs> stop being stupid, you're going to get off. Isn't um, Pie in the Sky in it? Yeah. Is he a baddie? Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Um, Richard Griffiths. Richard Griffiths. A bit thin then. Uh, BG Bear, Superman 2 went with my nan, who throughout the entire film kept saying tea from China, meaning the story was far fetched. <laughs> um, right, let's have a gander. And uh, Andrew Chapman says she was good in Falcon's Crest. Oh, she was in Falcon's Crest, good, you're right. She? Yeah. Somebody sent me, it might have been. Um, it might have been Andrew Chapman. Andrew sent me it, but somebody sent me the Falcon Crest credits and said, oh, have a go at doing them. And, and she's in there. Yeah. Right, drum roll, my number one is. Okay, lovely music. I love the Goonies. Um, is that blokey? Uh, this one's not, not really, as blokey. No. It's a little, little gang of kids, isn't uh, it? Yeah, I loved it. I loved the thought. I think I used to, because I used to like going out riding on my bike like the Goonies. I think I thought I lived like the Goonies, lived on a beach. Uh, Melanie Fairley never seen the Goonies. Melanie, get oh, watching it. Oh, do watch it. You'll see um, Anne Ramsey, one of my favourite characters. In what this. if Alan's favourite actress is Anne Ramsey plays Mama, Mama Fratelli. Fratelli? And it's one of your. Before we even did Isolation Creations, we had a Mama Fratelli outfit for years, haven't yeah. we? So it's one of Alan's go-to fancy dresses. Again, I love a baddie, and um, Mama Fratelli's the baddie in it. Yeah, you're the one they call Mouth, aren't you? And it's just so <laughs> odd that they chose an old haggard old woman to be like a. Uh, a mate truck is gang. Do you remember they say, uh, this, this water looks dirty. It's wet, isn't it? It's wet, ain't it? <laughs> Who wanted water? <laughs> I love it. So, if you never watch The Goonies, watch it. It's um, a bunch of kids find a treasure map and go off to find treasure, which is then going to save their neighbourhood. Our lovely rich chum, kids. Dave, who's coming to visit us next week, sent us a, a box of candy about uh, two years ago. And then it's a baby Ruth bar. Ruth. Which Ooh. is still in our fridge because we're saving it for our for the, when we re, when we make the Goonies our Goonies video yeah because um, Alan's going to be sloth we mm. just got to work out how to make the sloth makeup on your face yeah I'll just do that. one eye um, Goonies is a still holds up today my twelve year old nephew loves it says Alex Johnson oh that's good I don't think there's anything weird and like rapey in Goonies yeah um, there's an edit though isn't there they always put on TV which is the, they get all the they get all the bad bits out. Oh, and they take the drug references out. Yeah, and the one-eyed Willie. They tell that out, don't they? No, they must keep him as one-eyed Willie. Okay. So I never watch it when it's on TV, do we? 
No. But we've um, it's on it's on one of the streaming net- networks. I've seen it on there. Um, love it. Uh, so Sarah Simpson loves the Goonies. Has it on DVD. Paul McFarlane says, "Hey, you guys." Uh, John Morissette says, "I like Dan Ramsey." Um, Paul says, "The Goonies is amazing." Lee Ludlow, I was fifteen, sixteen. Lee bloody Ludlow, mm. fifteen, sixteen when the Goonies came out. I never watched it, as to me, it wasn't cool to watch it. Yeah, you're a little bit too old to watch it, Lee. I was reading about um, Anne Ramsey and her husband. Her husband's actually in um, Any Which Way But Loose or Any Which Way You Can. They do a little scene together where they drive to a motel. Oh, is that her husband? Yeah. And um, during the Goonies, because it was such a long stretch of filming, they rented like a little villa, a little oh. cabin, and her husband came with her while they were filming it. And all the kids used to sort of go around and... Oh, and hang out with hang them. Hang out with them, yeah. Oh. They loved Anne Ramsey. Uh, Mad Abba fan says, Anne Ramsey's best was throw mama from the train. And then! <laughs> oh, she lost a lot of her tongue by then because of mouth cancer. Oh. So that's why she said, and then! Angela Larson, Goonies is the best. I love when they have chunks uh, hand over the blender and they oh. make him confess to all his sins. Um, t- so they're like, tell us, tell us everything. And he goes, everything? They go, yeah, everything. And he tells them like all the things he's done. And Dunny like bored them to death. Uh, the story from school. Yeah, but he, the, um, the Fratelli brothers like him. He's funny. Because of the things he's got to. You're funny. Alan's number one. Drum roll for Alan. Da 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 da. Titty titty bang bang. Oh, I loved it. Lots of you have uh, mentioned Chitty I was in love with Truly Scrumptious. I wanted to be her. I wanted to. I wanted to live in the house that she lived. I wanted to wear the big dress. I wanted the swing that she swung on. When did she swing on a swing? After a lovely lonely man. (laughs) This bit freaks me off though, doesn't it? Because you'd never believe that. Dick Van Dyke was a puppet, would you? No, oh, yeah, he's not, he's not as good as her bit. <laughs> Me and my brother used to love that. We always used to sort of like do it, but we used to lift our shoe up like that. <laughs> what a lovely bit of detail. That little bit, that little, little detail. detail. Yeah. It's called a bevel, isn't it? And then they also, when it stops and she sort of goes. She does a little kink, kink. Yeah. Did she do anything else? Um, Sally Ann Howes. Yeah, she did, she, did, she did a fair bit. Um, Anyone know? Sally Ann Howes, what did she do after Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? She's not Nancy from Oliver, is she? No. No. Uh, Child Catcher, did he scare you? Oh, yes. Bloody hell, he scared anybody, even scared adults, didn't he? I'm just, like, thinking, are the kids irritating? Yeah. They are, aren't they? Yeah, they're a bit irritating. Was one of them Michelle de Tris? Uh No, the sister. Is it? Is it her? It's it's the other sister. Or is that the other Detrice? Oh yeah, is it? Or is that Mary it's Poppins? Not... No, that, I think no. it's a Detrice, isn't it? Yeah, and I know that. Um, I think um, Maynard's in it. Do what Caroline's um, just said there. Oh, T- Caroline turned her swing into one like Truly's and made um, her mum, Hick. Do plaits in her hair and off she went, swing, swinging like Truly. How did I not know Truly Scrumptious had a swing? Could you imagine like that song? You must fast forwarded it. No, because do you know what song I do love? Mm. Toot sweets, toot, toot sweets. sweets. And also, um, we have the little scene with um, um, Arthur Mullard. Oh, uh, yeah, and um, Barbara Windsor. Yeah. And apparently she was doing something in the studio next door and they just sort of just grabbed her for a little part. She would do in one of the carry-ons, most probably. Yeah, Darren like... might know if he's still here. Yeah. Um, and Grandad from it. Oh, he's a famous um, kids kids film writer, isn't he? He's... Yeah, he wrote Mr. Blond. Yeah, the amazing Mr. Blond role. He was like 40 when he played Grandad. He was. P-O-S-H posh. Uh, Martin Garton Spencer's mentioned Anna Quayle oh, was yeah, in it. Oh yeah, from from Grange Hill. Yeah, Mrs. Monroe from Grange Hill. She plays "You Are My Little Judgy Face," doesn't she? Yeah. Timmy Alexis Carrington Ward called his two cats after the kids in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Are they called Jeremy and Jemima? Yeah, I think so. Do they get they get taken by the child catcher? Yeah. Don't they? And say by Benny Hill. Like when they're taken by the child catcher, do they just get put in like a little? They don't get put in a jail, do they? Well, the, the carts 
a jail, isn't no, it? No, but why? There's like then all the kids are like living in some caves, aren't they? They're the ones that have been saved. Oh, are they? I think they're in, they, isn't Benny Hill put them down there? I'm not sure. Yeah. Where are Jeremy and Jemima? They're put down there. But they get caught by the child catcher because they're oh, greedy they? and go for lollipops. How do they get? Them? I'm oh, sure we'll they're... have to watch it again. Oh, we'll have to watch it again. Uh, Lady Macaroon, character actress, has joined us. Um, so the special effects in Chitty Bang were very forward for the time. Costuming was amazing. They were, weren't they? Uh, Dale says Caroline and himself did this routine many years ago in an amateur show. I wonder what show it was. Was it like the best of the musicals? Oh, I'd love to see that one, yeah. I'd love to see Dale doing his little Dick Van Dyke wiggly dance. <laughs> Dick Van Dyke, Dyke annoys me in a lot of stuff, does he? He's very long-winded, isn't he? Like, my old, my old bamboo goes on for a bit and so does the chimney sweep thing. He likes his, he likes his long song, doesn't he? He does. He loves his long da- dance routine. Um, Nibbles um, Bubbles says she thinks the kids are underneath the, the castle. Yeah, they are, in hiding. The lady character at Macaroon says they're underneath in the catacombs. But, like, are they, is that, is the, the catacombs the jail? No, I think they're there for their own safety. Uh, Timmy Alexis Carrington Ward has now just realised that the Baroness was the woman from Grange Hill. Only just found that out now. Thank you, girls. Well, thank you, my dear. And there's some great um, casting for uh, the Baron um, when they did it live. Brian Blessed. Mm. Oh, can you imagine him being that part? It would have been amazing. And Sheila Sabatini. Oh, yes. Played um, yeah. Coochie Face. Yeah. What's her actual name? Sheila Sabatini. No, that's oh. the character's name, isn't it? Oh, what's her name? Nicola. McCauliffe. <laughs> we went to see her, didn't we? In a, in a, in a, um, we went to see her in a, in a, a play about, um, what's her name? Uh, Wallace Simpson. Wallace Simpson. And it was in, and it was in a it tiny theatre. It theater. was in quite a little ropey theatre in, in London on the fringe. Called the Finborough, if anyone's and, um, from London. Timmy might know the Finborough. There was only about 30 seats, wasn't there? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we sat at the back, so I'm always sick at the back at the end, me. And we sat by a baby monitor. <laughs> and I, put, I said to Jamie, the baby monitor. I bet it's um, she, she, Sheila Sabatini. Um, Sheila Sabatini's like <laughs> listening in. <laughs> She's got the other bit of the baby monitor in her dressing is it full, room. Is it full house? <laughs> it doesn't sound like many's in. Is it full house? Put the thing on. Is my mate Marjorie Campion? <laughs> <laughs> Is Marjorie Campion that scout woman in she? Oh, Sexual Spirit was one of the most dullest comedic comedies I've ever set my eyes on. Has it got Duncan Preston yeah, in Yeah, but, it? oh, it was so boring. What does Marjorie Campion talk like? Uh, blush to work. <laughs> <laughs> she was in Brookie, wasn't she, for a bit? Oh, in Brookside. Um... Oh, it was my boring. I'm sorry if you, some of you like the uh, surgical spirit, but I. Th- oh, surgical spirit. Oh, yeah, really? what a long winded thing. Sheila Sabatini. <coughs> I'm sure the, the gags and the storyline was the same every week. Hugh Bonnet says all the kids were hiding under the castle because kids were banned. They stole food from the castle kitchen. Um, and that's how they got up there to <coughs> rescue kids from the tower. So they must have rescued Jeremy and Jemima and put them in the catacombs. Yeah, and that's how Benny Hill's part of that, isn't he? I don't know. I think Dick Van Dyke goes and sings Lullaby Mountain to them, doesn't he? Yeah, they're like that. Yeah, we'd rather have a pie. <laughs> Lady Macaroon character actress says it wasn't best explained. <laughs> no. But there was a lot of children under there. And then after all that, you, and then and then he goes, and it was a story after all, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it was all, it was not real. Oh, Jesus. Oh, shitty, shitty, bang, bang. Well, I think, I think the car tr- actually flies in the end, doesn't it? So it was real. Scylla Black, I think, speaks for us all when she says surgical spirit was a bit thin with jokes. <laughs> I just I just remember them just laughing about, like, um, uh, that, 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 that's your test, you broken. <laughs> Isn't Sheila Sabatini a bit like, if, if they made a musical of Dragon's Den, she'd play Deborah Meaden? Yeah, that she'd do that. Right, my lovely people. We should... Um, it's quarter past nine. We should let those of you who want to go, go. Um, and those of you who want to stay, can stay and hang out with us. Um, but we've got a nice finale for you. Um, now, I became obsessed with this couple this week. So I found another video of them. So enjoy. Um, I think they're called uh, Ricky and the Duke. <laughs> Bye. We'll see you. If you want to hang out with us afterwards, we'll see you afterwards. We'll be here. If not, we will see you next Wednesday night for another Wig and Slingback. Bye, y'all. Bye, bye, bye.
on them what are they called Johnny and who uh, Ricky and Johnny Ricky and the Duke yeah the YouTube police popped up and said we're going to be temporarily blocked but aren't they amazing um, so we're, we're back there's an isolation creation that we can definitely do yeah it looks like I'll be in and you'll be there in my caftans uh, Martin Hyde has hello joined darling us. hello my you? love I think she's been out for someone's birthday I think she's been out on the piss hasn't she she has got cocky tea cock, 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 city um Emotional Urban Homestead said she loves the uh, pianist. That is from the Royal Variety Show 1975, which actually isn't even on YouTube. So I don't know how we got rumbled. Why don't be whoever owns the music, darling? Yeah, I don't know. We'll wait for that little warning to disappear. Uh, um, we showed them the other day, didn't we? And so we said, oh, they're from like Sheffield or something. Yeah, they were a double act, a married couple. Um, she's got a really nice singing voice. He dance, he does tap dancing and like big split leaps and all sorts, and does stand up comedy. Um, I can't remember their name, their proper name now. Um, oh no, oh no, was there a copyright claim? Still black. I hope we're still with you on uh, oh. YouTube. Let us know if we're still live. If you can hear us. Um, yeah, hopefully we're still with you. Um, what was I saying? Um, about them, about them to be on the. Um... And then they were on the wheel tappers, wheel tappers and shunters club, mm. uh, and got a lot of attention. So then did the raw variety performance, and then got little bits and stuff. And he died in. He died on performing on stage. Oh, did he? he left her a little widow. Oh, at least he died doing what he loved. Oh, I know, but horrible, eh? Yeah. They would. They'd be the type that would pop up at the railway club, wouldn't they? Yeah, and they'd they really be loving them. We went into the railway club um, a couple of Saturdays ago with Stephen and Martin, and there was just this like guy singing sort of Elvis numbers, wasn't it? Mm. And then suddenly this like jazz flute started, and Martin went in the, the room where the performance was because we were sat outside in the bar area and said, "It's the man, it's the singing man. Same He's now man. playing a flute." I didn't believe him. I and he was the most hum- humble bloke you ever met, didn't he? Because he came out and Martin went, "Oh, you're brilliant, mate." He went, oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Caroline's still watching on YouTube, so we are still on YouTube. Um, we're not said it for a while, but if you did want to tip us, anyone, ding, 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 you can zap that and tip us. Um, so we should talk about this. Oh, of course, we've not seen you since we've done it, have we? We thought. Right, and enough is enough. Enough is enough. It's time to get it, the ball rolling. And the problem was, we were just waiting for to get things like costume to go, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Jamie, was sorted because we just got him a military jacket. But it was me, nothing comes in my size, military wise. So I had to sort of turn an old, like, uh, grey blazer, a man's blazer, into like a, like a prisoner uniform. Which took it took its time, and because we're fans of the show, we kind of like didn't like didn't want to squeeze all the characters because it's like it got, went on for nine years or something, didn't it? Eight years, I think. Yeah, seven or eight. We don't want to squeeze everyone into one video, so we decided to do year by year. Um, so we thought we'd um, start off with the first year, 
when Prisoner kicked off in 1979, and we looked at um, the characters that were featured. And obviously, we didn't. We did. We've not done every single character in that year, but we did the sort of the iconic ones, the ones that people remember. Let's have a little look. So. <laughs> We'll know that she was only in about 10, 14 episodes. Um, but the, the, way they, the, the actresses at the time just thought it was going to be, it was only going to be a short, a short winded drama, for, what, 20 odd episodes, and that'd be it? Yeah, she doesn't last long. And I think um, the actress, is it Carol Burns? Yeah. Asked to be written out. She was like, she's like a, a an icon for um, lesbians, isn't she? They all love Frankie. Yeah. And she um, sort of asked the writers to write her out and, you know, to, to be killed off. But then, when Prisoner got famous over here, she was always doing, the, she's always doing the circuit. Like a tramp on chips. <laughs> remember bloody me? Yeah. Um, let's have a little look. So this is, in, this is in our lounge. That's like a backdrop we've got of brick wall. Um, so it's not a real brick wall, is it? No, it's one of those photographic like fabric things you can put up against a, a you know, wall. And the the bars are a baby it's gate. Just one little baby gate, which features in a couple of our sketches. I think it features in um, Baby Jane. Yeah. Um, but I sprayed this one. I sprayed it black. Spray painted it black, and it's the baby gate is in a like a um, like a, a handyman's vice thing. A vice, so it can stand up in front of. In front of us. And it's Lynn Wonky Warner, the one that's... Um, in she's a little wet. I'm innocent. She didn't do it. She was uh, she was found guilty. She they, she was put in prison for killing a child, but she hadn't done it. And the actress has just recently been in that funny comedy we like that's set in Australia. What's it called? Where? Fringe, no. Uh, remember it? Yeah. What's it called? I can't remember. Okay, I can't remember either. Uh, Jay Shaw says Lynn Warner was in Murder, she wrote, and Dynasty. Oh, yeah, she went to America. I think she went to America, didn't she? To sort of try and be sort of like a um, famous actress. And I think she did. Or she might have married somebody who's, you know, part of all that. <laughs> Poor Karen Travers. She, she actually looks like one of the extras there, doesn't she? Pie without the glasses on. <laughs> um... Karen Travers was um, in prison for... If you've not watched Prisoner, we're spoiling lots of it for you. But she was in prison for killing her husband, who was a, who was a bad one. And, um, and then she just got out got off with it, didn't she? But yeah, and then she just, she like, just because she was clever, they they sort of, she started going to university in prison, didn't she? And getting yeah. a day release and going off. And then uh, she had a soft spot for the doctor. Yeah, she, the doctor was her boyfriend. Um, so and then she, was, then she was cleared of all, all the murders. And that's not a textbook there in your hands, is it? No, it's Nigella's recipe book. Nigella's books are always good for... Because I know some parts I do, uh, the the comparison to the real character is absolutely shit. So I thought, well, I'll just put a book and show its character. Oh, travels. no, we always get the essence of them. We're never going to look like them. I've got a beard. But we get if we get the essence right, it's good. Jamie was like, um, oh, I don't know what to do for the Dr. Miller. I said, oh, I know what we'll do. We'll have a, a prisoner. I think it was my idea. Was it? Yeah, it was. I wanted to have you in doing that. Oh, uh, was it? Oh, sorry. Stealing my directorial debut. Look who's, look, 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 look who's look just ghost. ghosting in. Let's talk about her now. So, Eric oh. David. Eric Davidson. Um... I should have been Erica. Why didn't you want him? Why didn't you be then? Because I knew you wanted to be. Uh... You can be the next one. No, you're being the next one because you're being Erica at home, aren't you? In the next. Um, one? we we ne one of our followers um is actually um, Patsy King's niece, isn't she? And uh, she sort of said, "Oh, thanks for doing Auntie Pat, Auntie Patsy." Uh, we wanted we wanted to get the gap in the teeth. She's on the phone to someone from the department. Must be Ted Douglas. But the hardest bit was the hair for her, mm. wasn't it? Because she had this sort of Mekon kind of sculptural hair. And we don't really have a wig like that, really. And So I did I did that, didn't I? Yeah. I pinned it all up for you. But I did quite well.
Do you remember Jean Vernon? Jean Vernon, a social worker. They always had social workers popping in and out of prison. Though. They never really lasted long. But what we liked about Jean Vernon was she was just always like swanning about people's houses, wasn't yeah. she? She seemed to live with Meg. The, the... I know, want to be roommates with boring Meg. <laughs> Smock Bob's just said Carol Burns, aka Frankie, was in the Bill and Tag. Oh, really? Was she? I didn't know that. Um, so yeah, that's Jean Vernon, social worker. Oh, these two. So that's Eddie and Marilyn. Alan's about to say that my finger smells of shit, I think, here. Now, I remember Marilyn was sort of like the sort of ditzy prostitute uh, who who sort of got off with Eddie, who became became his electrician. And they used to sort of go off into the ceiling, didn't they? Yeah, they used to go off and have nookie in the ceiling. In cupboards and, you know... And people would cover for them. Um, She was only in it about ten episodes as well. She looked a bit like Brigitte Bardot, didn't she? Yeah. That's Monica Ferguson. Um, and she sort of comes in in and out of it, doesn't she, throughout the whole... As different characters, I think. Does she? Yeah, sure. she's not this character when she comes back in. She comes back in as someone called Tinkerbell, I think. Oh, like she does, that's biker. right, yeah. But you, those of you who watch Neighbours will recognise she played Toadfish's mum in Neighbours. Mm. It's a bit Rebecca-y. Um You look just like her, don't you? Yeah. There, there. there especially. Yeah, that was, um, that's one of the parts that I did well on. And the little key I'm holding is a little present from Joel and Sarah and Elaine that she put the popped into my birthday box. <laughs> and it's this little bent key. I thought, oh, that'd be good. I could do a prop to use. So that's, uh, yeah. Well, I think Joel actually said, oh, this is good for your prisoner sketch when you finally do it. But honestly, if you've watched Prisoner, Alan is a dead ringer for Monica Ferguson there. There's a photo of Chrissy Latham on the internet somewhere, and she looks exactly like that. <laughs> Obviously, that beard. Um, but she's against a bit of all the fagging around. So Chrissy Latham was the one that um, Timmy Alexis was trying to remember the name of in his um, interview, wasn't it? He said she looked, yeah. she was a bit like Faith Brown. And Genevieve Lemon didn't really couldn't couldn't remember her anyway. But <laughs> she had a Cockney accent. But she like would have this. She she did steaming with it, didn't she? Yeah. She had, a co- <coughs> she had a Cockney accent. She had a daughter called Elizabeth, Elizabeth that was taken off her, and she always wanted to be with Elizabeth. And she comes in now, they quite well, doesn't she? She does. She's back in it so she'll, soon. She'll be appearing again. Top the heart. Typical top the heart. Now this is the old lady that's um, called Jeanette Mum Brooks. That's in the first year, and uh, um, I think she's leaving in the first episode. And you're like, eh. It just started. The actress uh, lasted till about 105, didn't she? Yeah, Mary Ward. And she was also well known as um, uh, Morel. Dee Morel. Dee Morel and, 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 and Daughters. And I'm sure she was a proper, proper like, actress. And I think she used to be over in, in the UK that in, in the 40s doing radio, I think. So, yeah, Mum Brooks. Yeah, she died recently, a couple of years ago, didn't she? 105 or something. And that's a child's um, pink hat, isn't it, on your Yeah, I tried to do everything on the cheap, and I found a bucket hat on Vinted for a pound. And I thought, yeah. But obviously the person didn't say it was a child's hat. So it was like for a toddler. So if she turned around now, you'd see a big cut on the back. So all of the back of it's just open. Like a spin. Like... Him there, uh, Bill Jackson, Meg Jackson's husband, gets killed in like episode two by Chrissy Latham with some. I didn't do it, B, with my scissors. <laughs> and what does Meg say? Are you satisfied, man? Are you satisfied? Um, so yeah, Bill Jackson. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you made it. You made little um, epaulettes. Well, you put see, because I've got short arms, um, I had to sort of chop the arms off. I, chopped, 
I've actually cut a bit too short actually, so it's alright, it's quite high. But the extra fabric made my um, my epaulettes and my little fake pocket pockets. You're looking through the bars, and then later on, Vera closes the bars, so we had them on little, little, little casters. Yeah. Um, again, that's Hair by Jamie, isn't it? Yeah, you did well with that, didn't you, dolls? She's going to be in it every 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 episode, I think. Yeah. But she has she has questionable hair choices later on. Um, but this was when she was prime sort of purdy bowl. Yeah. Um, so she's like the nice one. And you notice on our on our sort of shoulders, we've actually got Wentworth. Yeah, we've got little Wentworth patches. Um, patches. lot of love for Nookie this week. Doreen. Um, Doreen's in it for a few years as well. She'll, she'll, she'll be popping up as well. All these ones now will be popping up with different hair. But um, at this stage, she was wondering why the teddy bear, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah. And she was like, every every lesbian that went in prison, she was their little plaything, wasn't she? Yeah. Um, but I was dead annoyed because I did the filming of this one. Um, Nookie Bear's in focus and Alan's not in focus. I couldn't tell, really. I was livid. I've got I've got it wrong, um, but yeah I love this. Alan's starred this wig and it looks just like um, uh, Barbara Windsor in Carry On that camping. Well, it's actually like a sixties wig with two clip-on bunches. Oh, is it little clip-ons? Oh yeah, the, those bunches come off. Oh, uh, Joel Hazeldean said Nookie Bear's also used in a country practice. She <laughs> is, yeah. It will yeah. be in a few of our videos. I think he's in Blankety Blank actually as Nookie Bear. Yeah. Uh, with Roger de Corsi. Jill Barron's just popped in and out because she's at work. So hello, Jill. Hi, Jill. Have a good day. We had a little bit of trouble with Lizzie, didn't we? Yeah, we did because Lizzie's known for having like a bob like Catherine Zeta Jones in Chicago. But in this first series... She's quite ropey. She's got, like, short, little, like... Man hair. Man hair. So Alan was adamant that I had to have, like, the, the first series Lizzie hair. And then Alan did me wrinkles with pen on my face. They didn't really work. They didn't work, did they? They didn't really work. So then I washed them off or thought I had, but I obviously hadn't on camera. Cause you can see, so I look like I've got a dirty face. But I think I got her mannerisms. Well, got, I? Yeah, I mean, you got you, you're drinking the grog from. I'm Mrs. drinking grog from Mrs. Davidson's office, <laughs> and we suddenly thought we should have had your hand creep up and steal the. Yeah, yeah, we should have had the grog in it earlier with Mrs. Davidson. Um, well, bang at me gently, B. But she does flourish. Yeah, um, throughout the years, we'll get the bob. We'll get the bob soon, and you'll recognise her then. <laughs> Queen B herself. Um, so B was top dog. She was in it for about three or four years, most yeah. probably. Again, there's some hair choices made with B because she has short hair at one point, doesn't she? Um, but yeah, so Alan Alan has to play Queen B because he looks like her. So there we are. Perfect wig, though. Queen B. Know. Yeah, it's ace wig. <laughs> And then oh, coming up. we thought, right, because me and Alan are a little bit obsessed with background characters in anything, really, but especially in Cell Block. Well, there's Edge. a handful we actually adore. Yeah, it's all you know, like Big Ron and Eastenders, those sort of those sort of background characters that get a name um, and are featured. So they are going to be popping up throughout. We're going to have different ones, but we had to start with these two because they are in it from episode two. like one or two. To the very end episode. Um, one's called Lorna Young. Lorna. And she does have the odd line throughout the years. But she's still <laughs> known as an extra. Give me an example of one of her lines. Mash is on in a minute. <laughs> on the TV. <laughs> and then I played one called Rita, uh, Tina Murray. Um, Everybody must remember Tina Murray. she got like <laughs> blonde hair. Her hair and, and little glasses. glasses. Like an old lady. She, but she must have been a murderer because she's in it forever. Well, on the on the on the wiki 
prisoner site. It says murder. She must have been a murderess. Um, Lorna must have done something bad. I think Lorna says murder as well. But we see a, there's a video of Lorna getting put in prison for drunk driving, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, that's a that's a little one off for the um like drug drink driving council. Anyway, here they are. These were our favourites um, to do. Jackson's getting stabbed. There's a riot going on. Yeah, Lorna's well Lorna's into like it. Lorna's like really goading it. She's the one who's like, go on, fight, fight, fight. And then she calms down after that, doesn't she? Oh, they were always like goading. When there was a fight, they always got giddy, these two. We were in the garden done this, and I was hysterical. Jamie's just captured that sort of. Tina vacant, Murray vacancy. Vacant look. <laughs> when, they're, when they're playing basketball in the garden. Or, sorry, in the, in the grounds. She's just always a little bit, oh, this is a bit... She always looks like weird. she's wrong, that she shouldn't be doing it. So, yeah, we had a lot of love for that. Yeah, we hope we did, we did people proud. And yeah, we hoped it would have been seen by more people, didn't we? We thought it would yeah. be bigger than it was. Um, but you know, there we are. It got it got a lot of views. Got about hundred one thousand eight hundred. Um, but we thought it'd be bigger. The good thing is, it's there. It's there now. So yeah, yeah. Someone asked, have any of the cast seen it? We don't know. I don't think so. Um, and over here, someone said. Um, have sent this video link to Talking Prisoner in Australia. So it might, you know, it gets shared, I think, on some prisoner fan sites. Maybe then it'll get more. Uh, and then with our Coronation Street, because we added um, different years uh, and it became a little mini collection, that seemed to sort of do a lot lot better after yeah. we've done a few. So there's some great ones coming up for year two. There's some good characters coming in it. Um, there's that old lady who goes... The one who kills her husband, what's she say? Carolyn! <laughs> oh, Carolyn! She'll be in it. Um, who else will be in it? Oh, um, Kay White will be in it. Betty Bobbitt will be in it. So we've got some, some good ones popping up now. Uh, uh, Jock Stewart will be in it. So, volume two. Whenever it happens, it'll happen. And keep your eyes peeled. Right, lovely people. We should love you and leave you and let you go about your day. Sorry if I've missed comments, because I do miss your comments, because they do whiz by. Um, but we love each and every one of you. And thank you for hanging out with us, as always, on a Wednesday night. Uh, we'll be back next week. Back on Wednesday. Um, there might be something this weekend. And then we're seeing Dave and Nigel and Neil next week. So we must be put pictures up for that. And then we've got our quiz on Thursday night. But we'll still do Wednesday night, won't yeah. we? It'll and just I'll, be a obviously, one. Uh, the quiz will then be done live on here. Um, not In a few out, weeks' time. In yeah. a few weeks' time. All right, lovelies. Um, so, if you are in the neighbourhood and you fancy quizzing with us, that is happening next Thursday night. Tickets are still on sale, £5 each. We've got a couple of tables left for that. And then, if you are wanting to come to our bingo, which is on Sunday, the July the 16th, and it's Cell Block Bingo. So it's going to be Cell Block H characters, first half. Sherry and Brandy are going to be in the second half. Loads of funny games. Prizes, it's, buy up. Yeah, it's just That's a laugh, off. honestly. Um, so if you want to come to the bingo, there are, I think, tickets still available. We'd sold about 60, 70% of tickets. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah but well. there are still some available. Um, it was advertised in the SJT brochure this last week. And we're going to be on the um, TV screens outside the SJT. Mm. So we've got to go and get our photos with them. Um, so Nibbles and Bubbles will be at both. So uh, anyone who's coming will see her there. Nigel TC, see you and Neil on Sunday. Um, see Caroline and Dale and next Thursday. See Bubbles on Sunday, I think, as well. Martin, if he's still in, we'll see you on Sunday. Um, and everyone else will see you 
next Wednesday. Next Wednesday night. Have a great weekend at the sunshine. What do we want to end with? Let's end with a bit of Scylla. Let's end with um, Scylla's roll call of funny celebrities. Uh, Lily Law, do you need a table full of people to come to the quiz? Lily Law, we do. Are you local, Lily Law? Um, you've got, I think we've got two tables free. So tables fit four. Um, so get in touch. Yeah, if you want to come, get in touch. Because um, we'd love to see you. Darren, Nanai, enjoy your drag queens tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and we'll end with a bit of Scylla. It's not going to be Scylla singing. It'll be Scylla doing her roll call. Because um, hopefully the police won't pick it up. All right. Nanai, everyone. Bye. 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 Have a fun weekend. Bye. Well, that's all we have time for this week, I'm afraid. I'd like to thank everyone who's taken part in tonight's show. John Pertwee, Roger and Jessica Whitaker, Walter Koenig and Pat Cash. Michael Ball, Barbara Windsor, Cannon and Ball, Richard Orford and 911. Anthea Turner, Bob Cowgees, Chris Goffey, Little and Large and Hank Marvin. Valerie Singleton, Ruth Maddock, Michelle Gale, Paul Shane, Liz Fraser, and Freddie and the Dreamers. Joe Pasquale, Herbie Flowers, Ted Robbins, Matt Lorenzo, Gilbert O'Sullivan, Bernard Gallagher, and Stratford Johns. Ultimate Chaos, Russell Grant, Lorraine Kelly, and Elkie Brooks. Jane Asher, The Bay City Rollers, Fern Britton, Ainsley Harriet, Sean Maguire, and Darren Day. Shiwadi Wadi, Tracy Dawson, Gay Search, Christopher Biggins and his pantomime troupe, Carol Vorderman, Sherry Houston, Linda Bellingham and Craig McLaughlin, Willie Carson, Tony Hart, Brian Conley, Brenda Lee and of course our own Bob Cowdy. Tessa Sanderson and our very own Bob Cowdy. Tessa Sanderson and our own Bob Cowdy. Tessa Sanderson and our very own Bob Cowdies. To the Gladiators, Jim Bowen, Claire Rayner, Eddie Lodge, and the Trogs. Philip Forrester, Terry Nupkins, Sasha Distel, Engelbert Humperdinck, and Neil Sedaka. The Royal Navy, Sue Pollard, Sonia, Cliff Richards, Matthew Kelly, Lorraine Kelly, the cast of Coronation Street, David Essex, Roy Castle, Matthew Corbett and Sooty, Gary Wilmot, Gemini, Status Quo, The Beach Boys, Joe Pasquale, Ben on Walkway, and Victor Obogu.